Hey everyone, welcome back to another Jackson Jet Setting Cruise Vlog. Today it is Sail Away Day on the Independence of the Seas. We're starting our day here at the St. Regis Ball Harbor. Check out that full tour on the channel. We're going to get on board here over at Port Miami. If you like these types of videos, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. We have a lot of cruise content up on the channel already and more to come. So this sailing, we were sailing out of Terminal G, which was the first time I had visited this terminal in Port Miami, slowly making my way through all of the terminals in Miami. I gotta say, this boarding process in this terminal specifically was a little convoluted, didn't have enough room for how many passengers were really trying to get on board. Typically, Royal Caribbean's embarkation process is the best in the business that I have witnessed. This one took about 30 minutes. There's a lot of waiting in small corridors, really jam-packed with other passengers. Just a lot of pinch points in this terminal. And that's not really Royal Caribbean's fault, but just comparing it to their other terminal in Miami, it is definitely a different experience here, but not really a big deal because we made it through the process still relatively quickly at least. And uh, overall, I love the uh, system that they have, you know, loading my boarding card onto my iPhone so that I can just scan that easily at the couple points that you have to scan. Makes it super simple for getting on board and uh, we were on sh soon enough. So this was an Independence of the Seas five night cruise that went down to Falmouth, Jamaica and Nassau, Bahamas. I'm excited for this cruise because this is my last of the Freedom Class. So I'm completing the entire Freedom Class with this ship. And I had a nice cabin on this ship. It wasn't a balcony, but actually a panoramic ocean view. I'd never sailed in that category of stateroom before. So we're gonna check that out here in just a minute. But overall, I love the Freedom Class ships. I think they're the perfect size. They're big enough to fit a bunch of activities and things to do on board. And they're very well designed. They just really flow really well and they fit. All the people that fit on board, I think really well it distributes people throughout the ship amazingly. So I was excited to spend five days on the Independence of the Seas. So of course my first move whenever I'm getting on board any cruise ship is to go find my muster station and knock out the muster drill if I'm allowed to. Royal Caribbean, it's all done via the app pretty much. You uh, can watch a short safety video and listen to the ship's emergency horn on your app. Those are two of the checkboxes, and the third final checkbox is actually going to visit your muster station. They'll scan your app, and you are good to go, and that's the last you'll have to do anything related to the muster drill on your embarkation day. All right, we're all done with the muster drill. Now we're going to find the Crown and Anchor desk so I can become enrolled. Yes, I did have to visit the Crown and Anchor desk to get my status switched because my last cruise was too close to this one, and the status hadn't switched over yet. Did get my two free waters as an Emerald member, which is amazing. Huge perk there. Honestly, Emerald status, not really all that different from Platinum that I had before, but I'm making my way to Diamond, and that's the more important part. But an absolutely beautiful sail away day here in Miami. One of the best days I've ever seen in Miami. It's just absolutely gorgeous outside. Really sets the mood for the trip. I don't know about you guys, but when it's raining on Embarkation Day, I am just... A little upset a little sad I want the energy of the ship to be bumping for my cruise vacation if you guys had a good or bad sail away experience let me know in the comments this is my first time sailing on the Independence of the Seas which is another amplified Royal Caribbean ship really just a fancy term for adding a bunch of stuff during dry dock a little bit more intense than dry dock really love this kid splash pad area a bigger area than a lot of the Oasis class ships that I've seen, which is amazing. We were docked right next to the new Virgin Terminal. When I sailed Virgin Voyages, this wasn't quite completed yet, so it was cool to see that. No Virgin ship in port today, though. Um, but a beautiful, beautiful day in Port Miami. Uh, not the biggest fan of this terminal, obviously, but uh, they got to squeeze in, you know, up to nine or ten ships, I think, at a time. Uh, so that's the way it goes. Had to wait around a little bit for my state road to be ready. It was going to be ready at 1 p.m., 1868 was my cabin. Again, it was a panoramic ocean view, uh, spacious ocean view. Uh, so let's check out this cabin here. Walking in, one, I love the deck location right next to the spa and the fitness center. It's going to have, you know, front ish facing views. I just absolutely adored this cabin. Nothing really special about the bathrooms here. These are going to be your standard Royal Caribbean bathrooms. 
definitely large enough for two people to share on a week-long voyage. You're gonna have plenty of storage space right next to the sink, which is awesome, st storing all your toiletries there. Of course, the toilet, and then you have real doors on the shower there, a little trash can underneath the sink, just one sink there. And then you're gonna have your combo uh, shampoo and body lotion, uh, body wash right there on the wall. Which I'm not the biggest fan of. I do think that Royal Caribbean, for the price that most people are paying to get on board here, could give us a separate shampoo and body wash. I'm gonna keep harping on that until they change it. Plenty of storage space here in the closet areas as you walk in. Little drawer sets here behind a door, keep everything nice and looking nice. While you're in the room, you don't see into your closet. You actually have these doors that keep it away. Plenty of hangers for your hanging clothes. You do have some laundry services on board as well. Of course, the life jackets in case anything goes wrong. Then a nice little desk area to the right. Some more storage above that. You're gonna have your safe as well as another shelf for storing items. Plenty of storage space in all these cabins, which is really great. You're gonna have your mini fridge underneath. No like drinks to speak of in there. I do like how the door itself opens with the cabinet door. That's a nice touch. A nice real chair there for you to sit on. Been on some carnival ships and it's really just more of a stool. You have your breakfast menus for room service. That is an extra charge on board Royal Caribbean. And then a lot of little papers welcoming you on board, various statuses, uh, making sure you are aware of all the perks while on board. Nice little sitting area here. Really liked this just for, you know, put on shoes in the morning or just laying not in bed. Maybe you're a little sweaty, you don't want to muddy up the bed uh, after coming in from a short excursion. You got the couch there. Nice giant TV though. Really love the size of that TV. Don't watch much TV while I am rolling along here on cruise ships, but it's nice to have the ship map uh, up there. Then here is the star of the show here in the panoramic ocean view cabin. It's a panoramic ocean view. It's got two floor to ceiling windows really loved how they slanted towards the ocean so you really get a great sea view from these if you can score one of these cabins i think it's like one of the best uh, options available i actually like this maybe even more than a balcony uh, but here is the full shot of the room my first time sailing on a longer voyage in a while so i actually have an exclusive top tier event to visit on this cruise we'll check that out on one of the sea days and then, unfortunately, one of my Jamaica excursions was canceled, so I did have to rebook something on the fly. I was excited about the deal that I got pre-cruise on that uh, excursion, but didn't let that bother me too much. Went ahead and walked over to the spa and did a little spa tour here. So I will say the Freedom Class ships, if you're looking for a like very luxurious spa experience, while well, they do have, of course, massages and this whole large salon, but spa facilities themselves are not all that big. Um, they do dedicate a lot of space to the fitness center, which I think is really important. Um, but overall, if you're looking for these massive spas that they have started to build on some of the newer ships, you're not going to find that here. And I will say that the steam room and the sauna on board independent seat is actually a part of the fitness center, not the spa. So you have access for free, which is a huge perk with this ship. If you're someone who really likes to sit in the steam room all day, other ships will sell you a day pass to their spa experience. And it's usually pretty expensive. This is free on board, which is awesome. Next, I wanted to check out a little bit of the pool areas as well as the kid facilities on board. I like to do my ship tours. Shout out to my ship tour that's already on the channel. Put that link down in the description below. Uh, but I like to check out the kids areas on embarkation day as well as the spa because they're open. You can just walk in and there's no kids in there yet or anything like that. So it's good to check out. Of course, on the Freedom of the Seas to enter the kid area, you most likely have to go through the arcade. There's a few other entrances, but the main entrance is through the arcade. Fun for kids and adults alike. Love the size of the arcade on the Independence of the Seas. Just note that these are all for a charge, so if you let your kid run loose with their sea pass, may in fact spend more money in here than in the casino. Sometimes you can score a discount on arcade credits pre-cruise in the app. I did that one cruise, I think it was $20 worth of credit for $18, so you can get a small discount there. Just was trying to hit a threshold on a credit card offer and needed like an extra 18 bucks or so throw on there. So I went ahead and got some arcade credits. 
but that's going to be located next to all the kid facilities and they're all split up in different age groups so it makes it really nice for different kids of different ages to have activities tailored just for them. It's a really nice looking area here on board Independence of the Seas. Fuel is the teen area so there's a cool dance floor here. They're going to have like smoothies and tons of activities tailored just for them. Actually, we're using this, funny enough, as a baby play area while I walked through. This is kind of open play unhosted. So it must not have been a lot of teens on my cruise, but this is where the teens will hang out. And it's, of course, located right next to the arcade and Johnny Rockets. Now, a first stop for many when getting on board is going to be the Windjammer Cafe. It's going to be open for lunch. Shout out to the washy washy folks as part of the crew, getting people to wash their hands. On the Independence of the Seas, we had a crew member that was playing the guitar every morning. That was awesome. Just keep in mind that this is going to be a pretty busy place on the ship on Embarkation Day. But you do have several options to sit down. Giovanni's table is actually going to be open for seating. We're going to skip ahead here to dinner time because we sailed away. Enjoyed the sail away party, and I was going to do mostly main dining on this cruise. Wanted to check out the new menus on Royal Caribbean. Overall, I would say I'm not the biggest fan of the new menus. I really like the old menu with some of the favorites that were available every night. They took those away. Though the first Welcome Aboard dinner night has a lot of my favorites, like Escargot. And then I got the roast beef, which was very delicious. Nice and tender with a good sauce. And then the key lime pie, which was scrumptious as well. Really love the main dining room look, though. Really beautiful three-story room here. One of the prettiest, I think, in the fleet are on these Freedom Class ships. And then tonight, I decided to head to the ice skating show uh, as my nightcap, as my entertainment for the evening. Ice skating shows on board Royal Caribbean ships are just absolutely amazing. Do not miss them. I like them better than anything that happens in the main theater. It's amazing what they can do in such a small space. Then there was a party going on at the Royal Promenade as well, but that was my first day on board.